Okay. Um, starting sort of from where we left off the last time, this is the example in the book. And I got to say, it's just, it's just totally weird. Um, they had a, one array for where the keys would go into the slots. And then they had another array for the data values. And I was following the lead that they had in the Python version of the book. Well, there's two problems with this. One is this example is pretty meaningless. The numbers and the words have absolutely no connection with each other. So I rewrote the example so that we now have a meaningful example of mapping integers to strings. Namely, the integer is a postal code from the United States or zip code, and the data would be the city and state. So that makes it a little bit more meaningful. So that's problem number one solved. Problem number two is that the key, which is 61820, and the data and the value really belong together. They belong as a unit. And so what we're going to do is instead of having the slots being two separate parallel arrays, we'd like to have an array list of hash items where the hash item contains both the key and the value. And they're going to be generic as well. Now, what I said here earlier in the book was making a map with generic data types for both keys and values is significantly more difficult Turns out, no, it's really not that much more difficult. It's slightly more difficult or somewhat more difficult. And I'm going to do that now so that we can have something that's usable for any generic data types. For example, the example I'm going to use this time is I'm going to have strings as my keys and doubles as my values. Okay, there's no law against that. Whereas uh, updating the example in the book to make that happen would require a heck of a lot of work. So let's make something generic so that we have a nice usable thing to work with. Also, this is going to be somewhat like the assignment, which is another reason that I'm doing this. So here's our current hash table where I have the size, which is um, the number of slots. So actually, I think I'm going to change this to the number of slots. Okay, that's a more meaningful name because the size could also mean, well, how many items are there in the hash table? And that's in fact what the assignment is going to do. It's going to have an integer size that tells how many items there are in the hash table. So let's call this n slots and to make my life a little easier, let's um, search and replace size with um, number of slots. And I will match only whole words and do everything in the document. Okay, there. That makes things a lot easier. Again, learn to love the replace all. It can save you a lot of time. All right, now this hash table is not going to be a regular hash table. Instead, it's going to have a key type and a value type. Then... Instead of the slots and data being independent of it, we're going to have an array list of hash items, key and value. And that's what our slots are going to be. Um, I guess I should open up that hash item. And again, here we have the key and a value. We set it up with a constructor. You can get the key, get the value, and set the value, and here's the two-string method. And so there's not much to the hash item, but at least it puts our key and value together, which is what we really wanted. Okay, so now what we want to say is we need to initialize all of the slots in this array list. That means we're going to have slots dot add of, um, let's call it null. I believe we can do that. We also have to initialize slots, by the way. So slots is going to be a new array list of hash item kv. And then we can get rid of that. Now I'm going to compile this and I'm going to get a whole bunch of compile errors later on, but that's fine. I just want to see if this part works. 
Okay. And lovely, it says, okay. Oh, dearie me, what am I doing wrong here? Let's see here. Let's go all the way back to the top. Oh, yeah. Gee, wouldn't it be nice if I import java.util.arraylist? Let's see if that solves any problems. Okay, marvelous. So now we can do this. Okay. So now we're going to add nulls in all of our the entries. Okay. Now, if it's not length, it's size. Okay. What we now want to do is we want to say slots.get. And slots dot because remember we're not using an array anymore. We're using an array list. And then I guess I just need to say here, um, let's see, that's gonna be a hash item. Now I've accessed it three times there, and that that bothers me. So why don't we say here hash item will be slots dot get i. And we're going to have to name this item. And and now let's compile and see if we got rid of all of those errors. Great, those are all gone. Now, what is Pat? Pat uh, when we want to put a K, this is going to have to be a type K and this is going to have to be type V, correct? Okay, the hash slot is going to be the hash function of the key and slots dot length. Again, it's not length, it's size because we're using an array list. Okay, let's look at hash function real quick. So this is going to be a K and there's going to be V. Now, we can't return the key because the key might not be an integer, but we can say key.hash code. And we really want, because this could be a negative number, we're going to have to say we want to return the absolute value of the hash code mod the number of slots. Rehash is going to work the same way it did. We're going to take the old hash, which was a number already, so we don't have to change that portion. Um, let's do get first. Well, let's compile this and see what happens. Okay, so good. A lot of things are, are now going to, oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah, time to do another, oops. Let's compile again here. Let's um, replace dot length with dot size. Oh. And I'm going to have to turn off match only a whole word because we have more than a word there. And let's go. There we go. That solves a little bit. Of a, that solves some of our problem here. Let's compile again. Okay. This is the sort of a, 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 I have to slog through these things and figure out what's going on, but I am wondering what is causing this one to be wrong here. Okay. Oh, that's why, because it's type K, not a type, type integer anymore. Okay, so that solved that problem. Now we can't say slots sub position. We have to say slots dot get position is not equal to null. And then what we have to say slots dot get. Now here comes a, a tricky part. Remember, this is the hash item, correct? But we want to compare only the keys, which means we have to take the get key of that. 
So this is going to be what's called composing methods or composing function calls. We're going to get the position, the item at the, the, the hash item at that position. Then we're going to feed that to the get key method, which will return the key. And then we'll return that to the equals method, which will see if it is equal to the key that we're looking for. Um, if it is, then we're going to say slots.getOfPosition.getValue. Because that's the value that we want from it. And it's not returning a string. It's returning something of type V. So you'll notice there's not a lot of stuff that has to change here. We just have to be careful that we get all of them. So this is a surprisingly less trouble than I thought it was going to be. Um, again, notice I'm having this thing here three times. And getting around that would be a little bit ugly. I, there, there is a way to do it. There's a way to do the assignment within the while statement, I believe. But I'm not confident that I know how to do it right. So rather than try something and get way off track, I'm just going to keep, I'm going to do the get, get of position three times. It's order one anyway, so I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't have too much angst about this. And now we finally have to come to here. Luckily, this is void, so I don't have anything to do here. All right. Hmm. Okay, if I have a null, that means I have an empty slot, which means I now want to say slots.put at the hash slot. Um, no, I can't do that. Is slots an array list? Yes, it is. Okay, now I've got to look up array list. Unfortunately, this is something I don't use every single day, so I have to look this up. Um, and don't feel bad if you have to do this while you're programming. Okay, nobody expects you to memorize every single method call that there is in an array list. That's why they wrote this documentation. Don't feel bad about using it. And I know I want to do an add. There it is. That's what I was looking for. I want to add at a given index. That's that's what I was looking for. Excellent. Okay. So what I need to do here is... Okay, where was I? How was it put? Okay. I want to add something at this hash. No, I don't. It already has something. Correct? What I really want to do is I want to set it. Remember, I set them all to null originally. So I want to set the element at the specified with the, with the different one. Okay, that's, that's a much better idea. Because they all have values. I made sure of that here. They all already have a value. So there's something in that slot already. Therefore, I want to change it. And I want to put a new hash item, key and value. And data of hash slot goes away. Now, again, we have, well, slots.get of hash slot is not equal to null and not. I think you need to close 33. Pardon? 33, you need to close the parentheses, don't you? Uh, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> and then here, if we have slots dot, um, is null, then what we're going to do is Do all of that. Um, else the data, then all we want to do is change the value of it.
do I want to create a new hash item here rather than try and change only the hash, only the value? Okay, let's think of what's happening here. I've got done this slots that I get. That gives me my hash item, right? So that means I want to say slots dot get a hash slot. That's going to be a hash item. Then what I want to do is inside of my hash item, I want to set the value. That way I don't have to create a brand new um, hash item. Okay. Now it says uses unchecked or unsafe operations. And a lot of people were getting this when they were programming things. I don't like having warnings. So now in order to figure out what they mean by this, you have to compile it from the command line. Luckily, I'm using Linux. And if you're on a Mac, you're also equally lucky because you can open up a terminal right away and get to this and start doing your thing directly from there. So what I need to do is, let's say Java C, and we're going to do hash table.java. I'm going to see that error message again, or warning message again. So I'm going to recompile it. And I'm going to say xlint unchecked hash table.java. And there it is. Okay. There's six warnings on this. Wow. So essentially, there's a lot of places where I don't have the K and V in there, which is what I need. Let's see what happens if I put a K and V here, okay? And that was in line, which, which line was this in? Line 33? Okay. Let's save this. And let's recompile it. And now I have only three warnings. Cool. So that means that what I did there must have must have done what I wanted. Let's compile this again here. Yeah. Hmm. I want to go back up here and look at something real quick here. Okay. And now on line 39, I have the same problem here. So, yeah, let's put this here. And this also needs to be K and V. 39. And everything looks like it's coming from line 39. So line 39 generated all those errors. Let me restart the terminal. Yeah, got rid of all of them. Okay. Now, if you were to keep the warnings in there, I would not take off any points, by the way. But if you ever see this thing about you know, the unchecked when it's compiling, that means you haven't specified your um, generic types sufficiently. And I just like to have everything clean here. Okay, let's go to hash table test here and let's compile this and see if it compiles successfully. Well, good. I'm glad it does. And now let's get rid of these comments here and just at least this part before I do access and modification. Let's compile this. Now, either this is going to work wonderfully well or it's going to crash and burn. Time to find out. And I am surprised it actually worked. So there's our table, null, okay? And here I'm prov providing both the key and the value twice, which is sort of silly. Okay. So let's change our two string here um, for the hash table. We don't want the result. Of, okay. Here I want plus item dot get key. And then
Wait a minute, I already got the key already. I think I think this is what I want. Let's compile that again. Let's try this and see if it looks better. Again, this is not affecting the way it works. It's just I want to make it look correct when I print things out. Well, that was exciting. Okay, that, that, that certainly did not work. Okay, so let's go back here and take a look. I'm doing this, okay? I want the result to result plus item.getKey. Problem is if item is null, then I don't get anything. Okay. So that means result plus becomes um, item.getValue plus the dash, the arrow plus that. If it is null, result plus and becomes the word null there. So again, there are a lot of little changes. There's no big change. Okay, all of my algorithms still remain the same. Now I'm just making it generic. Isn't one of them get key? Pardon? Isn't line 21 of them get key? Line 21? 20, the one before. Yeah, what 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 do you what's the question? Do you want to want to be get key, get key, get value? Or do you want both? Yeah, get key. Thank you. Yep. I can't can tell it's gonna be one of those days. Okay. And let's come back here and let's run it again. There we go. And those are our slots. Now we can tell which ones are filled and which ones aren't. And you'll notice that hydrogen is 1.007. Now I'm going to access and modify some of these. And I'm going to change hydrogen to 1.008 because apparently there's a minimum and maximum atomic weight. Has anybody here in chemistry has taken chemistry? Is that true that you can have minimum and maximum atomic weight? Oh, okay. So, so that was new to me. Okay. So I'm going to change hydrogen. To, um, and I also want to find out if it'll give me a null for something that is not in the table. And sure enough, silver is not in the table and hydrogen. And now it still says 1.007. So that means that something went wrong with my table dot put. Yeah. And I'm not sure what it is, to be quite honest. Um, I'm not going to look at it right now. I'll fix it later. Does that is that okay with you? Yeah. The reason I'm saying that is because now that we have all this stuff that does things with generics, now you have an idea of what has to happen in the assignment. Yeah. So let's look at what the assignment is going to require. And what the assignment is going to require, instead of using this, what's called open addressing, we're going to use what's called chaining. We're going to have a certain number of slots here. In this case, we have seven of them. And when I have a collision, rather than trying to find another slot that's open, I will have a, another array list. I'll have a sub list on that slot. So everything that maps to zero, hashes to zero, will be in this sub array. Everything that hashes to one will be in this Subarray. So let's look at that definition that I have here. I have an array list, which is my slots. And each item in that array list consists of another array list, which is this blue area. And each item in that subarray list is going to be the hash item. And that's why I have this definition here. So now I've got a very deeply nested data structure. But that's the idea of this abstraction. We can compose them. We can nest them. We can combine them to give us more powerful stuff. And so the question is, that's all very well and good. Now, what does this mean when we want to actually do something with it? Okay. So I'm going to set up my array list here. And I'm going to use a loop to set everything to an empty array list. I could set them to null, but then that causes problems later on. This, by the way, brings me to a subtopic here, namely pay now or pay later. And pay now costs less in the long run. So in this case, I'm... Um, 
initializing the array lists, the main array list, to a um, each to an empty array list rather than leaving it as null. And the reason is that when I add something, I know I will have an array list ready to, to work with. If I left them as null, then at add time, when I'm adding something to the um, hash table, I'd have to check to see if um, the entry was null, and if so, create the array list, we call it the sub array list at that time. So that's the pay later. And, and that also breaks up the flow of what I'm doing. I was like, oh, oh wait a minute, it's null. I've got to create a new list. Okay, now I can add to it. Rather than, okay, I've got something that goes in this subarray list and I know it's already there, I'm going to add to it. So let's say I had to, I had, I had, I had to add Tokyo here. Tokyo maps, oops, I have to go here and do this from here. So Tokyo maps to zero, which means I add it to the array list for zero. Now, Mumbai, let's say that hashes to three. Since that hashes to three, and I can add it to whatever exists in that array list, which happens to be nothing, but I'm so I'm adding it to an empty array list. But that's fine. It's perfectly okay for me to do it. And now I have Sydney, which also maps to zero. I don't have to do any special checking. I only have to add it to the end of the array list for slot number zero. So that all works rather nicely. Now, this, having said that, that's sort of like, okay, what does he mean by that? I'm going to upload this for you later on today. This is a pseudocode. So here's pseudocode, presuming that you've initialized the array list of array list with empty sub array lists. Yeah, this is the pay now rather than the pay later algorithm. And here's what we need to do. And we want to get a key. We're going to hash the key to get the slot number. And then we're going to sequentially search through the subarray list of that slot. If I find the key, return the value. If the key isn't there yet, then I'm going to return null. I don't have to worry about, well, wait a minute. What if the subarray list is null? I guaranteed that it wasn't because I already initialized it to have an empty subarray list. Now, how do I put a key and value? Well, a lot of it's the same. I hash the key to get a slot number. There's no otherwise here. Now I'm going to sequentially search through the subarray list of that slot. If I find the key, I'll update the hash item with a new value. If I don't find the key, and by the way, if the list is empty, a while loop will end immediately, right? Okay, so while loops are great because they can do nothing gracefully. If I don't find the key, then I'll append a hash item with the key and value to that subarray list, and I'll also have to add one to the hash size of the hash table. Because one of the things in the assignment is we're going to have a size that tells how many elements are in the table. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm calling it append. Uh, the actual thing that I think I want to do is add. Let's go back here and check. Array list. And appends a specified element to the end of the list. Yeah. Okay. Now, one thing I did not put in the assignment, unfortunately, was figuring out the load factor. Namely, how full is the table? Oh, well. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll do that next semester. Yeah. So there's your pseudocode. And again, there's there's not a lot to this, but most of it, as is typical, comes into the setup and making sure that everything is set up properly with all the correct generic types. Um, let me go here real quick. 
Let's see if there's anything else that I'm missing. By the way, one advantage of using this chaining method rather than the, oh, okay. Back to notes. So the method, the, the, again, open addressing. And then they find the um, next open slot. Okay. The approach used in the assignment is chaining, which adds to a sub list. Yeah. And each has its advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. And one big advantage of chaining is that removing an item is very easy. Okay. Removing an item from open addressing is absolute hell because of collisions. Remember we said, if you find a null entry, you stop looking. Well, the problem is if you're the null entry that you, if you remove an entry and put a null in there and it's in one of the things where you would have had to search sequentially, you lose everything after that null. It, it becomes awful. Let's just say it's clear. Let's just say it becomes really bad. And so we're going to be used chaining for the assignment. And you can use any number of slots. By the way, when you're using open addressing, you should use a prime number of slots. That way, when you do your mod and your calculations, you're guaranteed, you're, you have a better chance of not having things come back to the same number over and over again. Let's see. So we're going to have the number of slots in the table, the number of items in the table, and the array list of array list of hash items. And they're all going to be public just to make our lives easier. You'll have a put method, a get method. You might want to call something, have something called get item that returns that node, the have the hash item the entry. It might make things easier for you. You don't have to implement it, but if you do, you might find that you have less duplication of code. And then get size and the get number of slots. we do that. One thing we're going to have you do when you test the table is you're going to have to print out how many things there are in each slot. And that's another reason, by the way, that I made this slots um, or array list public. So you can get to it from your main method, not having to go through all sorts of awful manipulations. So when I processed the file, there were 354 entries in the table. And... I had um, 20 slots. With open, with chaining, it doesn't matter if it's an even number or not. Although a prime number would probably be better now that I think about it. So use a prime number. And then once I saw how many things there were, so with only 20 slots, notice that some of these had like 20 items to search through. But that's better than searching through 354 items. So we we, we win on that at least a little bit. And then here's the second half of main where it asks you to type a city name and it will look it up in the table and return the value. And if something isn't in the table, it will tell you that it's not found. So that's the kind of output I want to see. Yeah. Now that having been done, shall we fix that problem with put and see what the hell is going on with that? Because it's, bu it's bugging me. Well, first of all, let's save this before I lose it. Um, okay, here we are with put. No.
Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in some debug output here. I'm going to see exactly what, what the heck is going on when I do this put. <clears throat> I'm going to have a lot of debug output from, unfortunately, all of these other puts here. So now the question is, do I want to add something as a debugging flag so that I can say, turn my debugging on and off? Professor, do you think that would be a good idea? Uh, sure, yep. Okay, this is a new technique, okay? We may as well show, show some new technique that I, I would be using for debugging here. Okay, this will be in hash table. This is going to be a static value. It'll be public, static, let's call debugging, and we're going to set it to false. Yeah. Now, because it's public, I'm not going to use a getter and a setter. I'm just going to have this here. And this means, that, and we're going to initialize it as false. This is good. So now what I'm going to say here is, if debugging is true, Oh, dearie me, what am I doing wrong here? It says, oh, yeah, semicolon would be nice. That would be nice too. Now let's just check to make sure that I haven't screwed anything up here. When I come here and go to um, hash table test, okay. Everything is still doing exactly what it was doing before. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set hash table dot debugging becomes true. And then I can say hash table dot debugging becomes false. Let's compile that. And now when I run it, notice how I've got this put key h value 1.008. So now I have the debugging output only when I need it. This may not be the very best way to do the debugging code, but it's the, again, the first way that you think of doing it that works is at least for the moment, the right way. We might want to make it cleaner. We might want to make it a little bit more beautiful later on, but right now, we just want things to work so we can see what on earth is going wrong with hash table. Okay. So now here, what I'm going to do is, again, if I'm debugging, he goes to To slot percent B percent. And then here, what we want to do is So I just want to see where this is going. And I need to know where the hydrogen went the first time, by the way. So that means here, what I want to do is I want to say, um, hash table dot debugging is true. And then I'll set it to false afterwards. I just want to see hydrogen. I don't care about any of the rest of them. So here goes to slot six, final hash slot three, 
7, 8, 10, 11, 12. Okay, why am I getting that there? Okay, now let's go back here. Oh. Yeah, so H goes to slot number six. And here, when I said put H value 1.008, my final hash slot looked like it was 13. Well, that's sort of strange. So something, something has gone weird here. Okay. Um, do you see the approach I'm taking here? I mean, I'm just, just putting things in here and trying to find out why, why, why do I get the wrong hash slot? That is really bizarre. Here, when I did this, I went straight to slot number six. And indeed, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's in slot six. There's no question about that. So why did it say the final hash slot was 13? That is just bizarre. And that's what I'm going to have to um, look through and see what, what's going on here. Well, it certainly wasn't null. Okay. So let's go here, system that, again, if debugging. What I want to see is where did I start off? There it is. I saw, I see it. I, I see it now. Okay. Now that I've put all this junk in here, I see what I see. What it, and for me, this is a well, duh, but it's not a well, duh type of situation. This is a really tricky little thing that went on here. Now I see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, but let's just go keep going here. Okay. All right. I'm going to com complete this first, and then I'm going to show you. Where, now that I see where everything's wrong, and it says I started at slot six, and so I got to the right slot. How come my while loop went through? This is what went through my head, like in in that when I between the time I s entered the debugging and I went, <gasps> all of the following went through my head. I'm starting at slot six, which is correct. Why is it going through the while loop? it should find the H there immediately, shouldn't it? We've determined that that's where it is. We said it went into slot six and looking at the table, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's there at six. There's no question in my mind about that. So why is that while loop continuing? And the moment I asked myself that, the answer came to me. Now, it may take longer for, to, if you haven't been programming for a long time. Here's the problem. I'm asking, is the whole hash item equal to the key? The thing in the hash slot isn't just the key. It's the key and value together. Well, the key and value together are never going to be equal to the key. That doesn't make any damn sense. So that means we have to change this dot get key equals. We're going to go to the hash slot. We're going to get the key and see if that equals to the key. Now things ought to improve. Now, the thing I'm not going to do, because I'm 99.9% .9 certain that this is the silly little error that I introduced, I am not going to get rid of the debugging output right now. Say, okay, it must be fixed. No, because 99.9% .9 sure means 99.9% .9 of the time I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to keep this here. And now let's see if it, it makes a difference. Final hash slot was six, start at slot six. Yep, that was the key problem. And now the key at H has a value 1.008 and everybody is happy. Yeah. This took a while for me to slog through. And sometimes that's, that's just the name of the game. You gotta slog through this stuff and put in a lot of debug output until you see what's happening. 
And then you realize, oh, okay, I'm doing the wrong comparison. I'm glad I went through all of this. The, 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 this was useful. The next question is, do I want to get rid of the debugging code yet or not? Professor, what would you do? Would you keep it in there or just comment it out? I would keep it in there, but you know, you can comment it out. When you turn it to false, nothing will be printed out. That's true. Since uh, the debugging is false, I, all I have to do then is here in my table test, I can get rid of yep. these statements here. And nobody will nobody will know that I had to go through all this angst to make this work. It's like the old joke about this king, medieval king who's riding through the forest. And he sees these trees that have targets painted on them. And there's an arrow dead center in every single one of them. And he says, this is amazing. I had, whoever is doing this, I need this person for my army. So he goes into the nearest village. He says, I've seen these trees. You know, there's all these targets that are there. there are, this is just me. Who, who has done this? And they say, oh, it's the village idiot. And so he goes up to the village and he says, tell me, oh, the village idiot, how is it that your aim is so true? I just say, oh, that's easy. I shoot the arrow and then I paint the target around it. <laughs> well, this is what I've done here. So I've painted the target around, and now I'm just erasing the evidence so that nobody will know. Yeah. And that's actually not an idiotic thing to do in this case. It's actually pretty smart. So there, there's your mini lecture about debugging techniques. And that gets us to the end of lecture time and it's lab time. And I think this will give you enough hints to be able to work with the um, assignment. Yeah, question. Pardon? It's not exactly, it's a two dimensional array list. Okay, um, that's this definition here. I have an array list of array lists. So my main array list, again, the main array list is my slots. So if I get zero, let's say I get slots sub zero, that will give me this entire array list. So now I will have, I'll be able to say something like, um, oh, I, I, I see what you're, I see where you, what you're getting at. So let's say I have slots is a new this is not this is not good Java. I'm just do, doing this as me. So I can say slots.get zero. That's going to give me the sub array list. For every key that hashes to zero. Are you in agreement with me there? Yeah. Now I can say slots dot get zero. And then I'm going to say whatever you gave me back from that, get zero. And that will be the first hash item in the first sub array list. So I'm going to compose my calls to get. And I can say something like for int i is zero, i less than slots dot get of zero dot size, i plus plus, I could do system dot out dot print f of, um, oh gosh, I guess I would need a j, won't I? Crap, okay. j less than slots dot get. I'm trying to do a nested loop for this. And the problem is I'm not working with a good picture here. Okay. This is going to go through each row. So let's call this row instead. I know this is not what you're going to have to do. And by the way, in your, in your program, you're not going to go through the entire two dimensional array list. 
Okay, because that would be just pretty much madness. Okay, so let's call here. Um, we're going to have a sub array list is going to be slots dot get. No, the number of rows is um, slots of size dot size. There we go. Get a row, and then for in column is zero, column less than. Um, sub array list dot size column plus plus we're going to this is in the out print f of um, so. In fact, that would print out your entire sub your entire array list of array lists. So rather than try and use some really complicated expression here, like slot dot get row dot get of column, I'm going to just assign slot dot get of row to a new variable. And that makes my life a lot easier. Then I don't have to worry about all of these. Yeah. You know, co composed calls that I would which can get a little bit overwhelming at times does that answer your question okay so that that's again this would go through the entire thing now you're not going to be doing well if you want to print out the entire table that might be not be a bad idea so you can see absolutely everything in it okay. um and the question is what is this going to be well that's going to be an array list of hash items kv right Because remember, that's what's in the main array list is com is made up of these subarray lists. So again, getting the types correct is really important. But does that answer your question? Okay, um, I will stop sharing here. And I'm going to stop the recording.